I made custom bosses for Super Mario Odyssey like Bouldergeist, King Boo and Bowser Jr. And today, I'll be showing you exactly how I did it. Let's get started. So just to give you a bit of context, my friend Nice Ninja Pig recently asked me to create a mod for him to play through on his channel. After having already made Pizza Tower and Cuphead, I thought it would be a good idea to make a mod with brand new bosses that would all be customized by me and not all be related to one game like in my previous mods. In total, 5 bosses were added, some being fully customized and others remixes of in-game bosses. So the first boss I made was Cagney Carnation from Cuphead. I'm not really good with Blender, so I usually look up for models online, and quite quickly, I found this incredibly well-made 3D model, which even had Cagney's animations attached to it. The only issue was that it wasn't free, but I knew it would be worth it, so I bought the model and was ready to import it in Super Mario Odyssey. I had never added a model with custom animations before, but I was willing to try and figure out how to do it. After doing a lot of research and running a couple of tests, I actually managed to put this little butterfly over the coin ring and gave it its very own flying animation. I couldn't even believe I had done that, so I immediately tried to animate Kanye's model, except it didn't work, and I didn't know why. I literally spent hours and hours trying to figure out how to fix the issue, but I simply could not do it. So, unfortunately, I had to cut out the animations for the mod. As an alternative, I used Rango as my boss and put Cagney over him, and honestly, it did not look bad at all. Rango's animations fit perfectly as he's got a super flexible body and a janky movement just like Cagney and Cuphead. Now for the gameplay, I made the fight take place into this arena from the Wooded Kingdom to match the garden vibes of the original fight. I also wanted to add the three helicopter platforms but couldn't find any model of them online. As a result, I decided to make them myself and even though I am horrible at 3D modeling, I came up with something that was totally usable. I put the three platforms in the middle of the arena and started to make some of Cagney's attacks. I once again decided to make the models myself and made a boomerang that I put over Rango's cap because usually when he throws his cap it comes back to him just like the boomerang in Cuphead. Another attack I wanted to implement was the spiky vines from the last phase. To do it, I placed these guys from the Cooking Kingdom on the arena to chase the player around and replace them by a model of a vine. Finally, I placed a few piranha plants and retextured them so that they would look like these little munchers from the original fight. Overall, this fight was super fun and way more challenging than the original Rango battle. Also, just to let you guys know, I actually updated Cuphead's cap and now he throws his head instead of Cappy like he used to before. I made sure to do the same for Mugman as well as Miss Chalice. But anyways, the second boss I added was Bouldergeist from Super Mario Galaxy. I used the Knuckle Tech fight as the base and replaced him with a model directly taken from Mario Galaxy. I also replaced the hands with Bouldergeist and everything just looked so good. For the arena, I replaced the regular platform with this rocky one from the dragon fight and kept the cave's background because I felt like it already looked good enough like that. For the attacks, I almost didn't have to change anything. Both bosses threw obstacles from the sky, both used their hands to try to crush the player, and both of them spawned enemies that came from the ground. The major difference was this boulder ghast attack where huge rocks rise from the ground and block the passage. I implemented this attack to my mod by placing some eels all around, and as crazy as it might sound, this one little change made the whole fight much much harder than it originally was. The only thing left to do was to change the models for Mario Odyssey. I first replaced the icicles that you used to break boulders hands with rocks, and then for the mummy, I replaced it with a bamboo from Galaxy. Sadly though, I couldn't find a way to make the mummy controllable like in Mario Galaxy, because as I said before, I don't know how to modify the game's code yet. But finally, as a final touch, I changed the triple moon with the grand star that you could collect once Boulder Geist was defeated. Overall, I was super happy with how this one turned out and was ready to move on to the next part. The third boss that I made was King Boo. This time, I wanted a fully customized fight rather than just take one from in-game and add my own twist to it like I normally do. I wanted to have a boss where Manx would be on a platform that moves constantly forward while also having to avoid all sort of projectiles being thrown at him. To realize this fight, I began by taking a platform and making a rail on which it would move throughout the battle. For the boss itself, I originally thought about using the fuzzy as it's one of the only enemies that I knew how to place on tracks. However, his animations wouldn't really fit King Boo and I didn't even know how I would find a way to defeat him. So instead, I used this baby mollusk lanceur enemy from the moon and placed him on a track in a way that Manx would always be facing him and would have to avoid his projectiles. And honestly, the animations worked perfectly for King Boo, especially with the tongue going back and forth like this. Now obviously, fighting the octopus alone would be way too easy, which is why I added other gizmos to up the difficulty. Also as we can see, I placed some walls and changed the background to give the fight a more hunting atmosphere. 
Anyways, in the first part of the boss, mummies from the boulder guys fight appear on the platform and run towards Mario. We can defeat them by either knocking them out of the place with Cappy or by guiding them to fall off. After that, some more mummies appear, but this time, giant Koopa clown cars also appear from the ground, which makes it really hard to stay on the platform. Then, we get to this section where we have to try to bypass all these laser discs that constantly activate one another when getting near them. And just to let you know, this task is much easier said than done. But if we manage to survive until this part, we still have a lot to go. Here, we have to avoid the spike traps while also being blown away by the wind, which is actually coming from typhoons hidden inside the walls. Then, a gang of fuzzies on tracks try to block the passage before we enter the final and hardest part yet, where poison waves come at fast speed from the side and rolling spikes try to knock Mario into the poison. One wrong move here and everything could be over. But, if we manage to survive to the end, we get on this platform and smash the with a ground pound, which makes a moon appear as well as a pipe to exit the haunted house. Now before moving on to the coolest fight yet, I want to say that this video took me a ton of time to set up, so I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and like the video. But anyways, the fourth boss I made was inspired from Mega Hammer in Mario Galaxy 2. I didn't exactly want to fully imitate the fight, but I still used some of the mechanics from it. Obviously I had to use the Brutal Tower for this fight, as it's pretty much the only boss that looks like a robot in Mario Odyssey. I wanted to completely change the way we defeat him, so no more birds to poke the bombs back at the legs or hammer bros to break his armature. So to make the boss, I started by having an arena where the ground is fully covered in lava. Then, I added these platforms that fell to the ground upon making contact with them. And at this point, all I had to do was find a new way to defeat the robot and somehow make it challenging. At first, I wanted to have a Yoshi to throw the bullet bills at the legs, almost like in Galaxy, but they exploded upon touching Yoshi's tongue. I really liked the idea of using the bullet bills, so I made it so you could either capture them and launch them to break the legs, or simply guide them to do so. I was super satisfied with this new mechanic, but I still wanted to add more to the fight. I placed some fire bros all around the place and once again used the Koopa Clown cars from the King Boo fight to make it harder to navigate on the platforms. I also remastered the model of the brutal robot so that it would look like a Bowser Jr. machine. And speaking of Bowser Jr., I put him over topper and removed all of the other brutals from the fight. I did that because in the original Mario Odyssey fight, Topper is the last brutal that you have to ground on on in order to defeat the robot. So now in my boss, it looks like only Bowser Jr. is controlling the machine, and once you kill him, the robot explodes and the fight ends. As a last touch, I wanted to turn the falling platforms into donut blocks, except that it made the game run very slowly, so sadly, I had to remove that feature. Just like for Boulder Guys though, a grand star could be collected once the boss was defeated. Now, for my fifth and last boss, I wanted to once more make a fight that was fully customized. My goal was to make it so Manx is being chased in a room full of boxes that he would have to destroy in order to collect 5 moon shards and get a moon. So now for the boss, I went on Game Banana and found this Shadow Clone Mario mod, which when enabled, actually spawns an army of Marios that replicate his movement, and this mechanic was just perfect for my boss fight. So I made an arena, and yes, as you can see, this is the one from the Boom Boom fight in Mario 3D World. Now for the gameplay, I placed some hard blocks all over the place and hit 5 moon shards in some of them. Finally, I put this Cap Thor guy in the center of the arena so that you could use him to destroy the hard blocks just like in the Lost Kingdom. I also added 4 laser discs to add some more challenge, and at that point, I thought I was done, but man was I wrong. The clones that chased Mario could destroy the blocks upon contact, which made the whole fight super cheesable and not fun to play at all. As a first alternative, I used these dinosaur blocks from the Cascade Kingdom, and while yes, they were unbreakable by the clones, I realized that the Cap Thor guy could also be defeated by Shadow Mario. So, I tried to use a chain charm to break the blocks, but it gave Mario immunity against the clones, which defeated the whole purpose of the fight. I kept messing around for a while until I realized that I could use birds from the Bowser Kingdom to poke bombs and make them break the blocks. And this one change actually fixed all of my problems because first, the bird didn't give any immunity to the player from the clones, and second, the clones couldn't break the blocks, but only the bombs could. So now my boss battle was done, and even though it was one of the hardest I had made, it was one of my favorites. If you want to see the gameplay of these bosses, head over to Manx's channel where he'll be doing a playthrough of this mod as well as my other Cuphead mod. You definitely want to see that one out because Manx made a really good job at showcasing everything and having a good storyline around it. But now, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments which boss was your favorite and which one you would have liked to see today. But anyways, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!